So um, we were pretty quiet from March until June when we scooped up Aaliyah with a, with a uh, helicopter and carried it over to Plattsburgh to begin fixed wing flight testing. We have to prove that the aircraft is stable throughout its entire operating envelope. That the performance, the controllability, the stability of the aircraft allows you to perform at a minimum normal procedures, take off landings, go rounds, stalls, slips, um, and it doesn't diverge from a, a controllable airplane in a way that is irrecoverable from the pilot's perspective. And we took that one step further to run the entire fixed wing gamut from um, a stability, a control, a spiral resistance, a uh, free returns, um, handling characteristics, <coughs> a flight test campaign. And then in parallel with that, we, we needed to validate that the performance of the aircraft, so the, the L over D, which is the primary metric that determines how slippery an aircraft is, lift over, drag. lift over drag ratio, exactly, the thrust to weight ratio, how much thrust we're really getting out of the, the system once it's completely installed, and, um, and all of the other kind of finer points of, of performance. Um, the way it rolls on the ground, the way it lands, the way it rotates, the way it derotates, mm -hmm. um, all needed to be proven uh, to basically clear the envelope as a fixed wing aircraft. And um, one of the really important things for an electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft is how the aircraft handles uh, at or near its stall point. So what are the stall characteristics? So we spent a lot of time doing normal stalls, power on stalls, accelerated stalls, where you load the wing to a higher than 1G condition and then decelerate the aircraft until it stalls, the wing stalls. And it's really important because you have to come near that every time you transition onto the rotors. So in accordance with our test philosophy, it was hover the aircraft, go and fly it on a fixed wing, and then make it go as slow as possible on a fixed wing in all different configurations and, and weights and then we move to going as fast as possible on the hover and those meet. Yeah. So when those meet, we've covered the entire envelope from vertical to horizontal. So we painted the ends of the envelope now and we brought the fixed wing back to the slow condition and now it's time to bring Aaliyah back to our research and development center here in Vermont and according to the FAA, we needed to clear all of those handling and stability and control uh, questions prior to bringing it back to beta. And so then we'll bring it back here and then we'll fly it back and forth a few times. Um, and that'll conclude our initial flight test campaign um, on the fixed wing side. So we've done the hover, then we did the fixed wing. Now uh, in, in April and June, we put on the, the hover kit again and we start flying more and more maneuvering flights in hover down at the ground and up at 5,000 feet. Um, we're now comfortable operating between five and 8,000 feet routinely and that um, that gives us um, you know, plenty of time at a safe altitude to paint the corners of the envelope. So the last time we spoke, we talked about that aircraft, Ava, which had eight rotors, and they started pointed upward, and they articulated forward, big gyroscopic loads articulating forward to transition from vertical flight to horizontal flight. Internal to that, we had liquid-cooled motors, liquid-cooled inverters, and gearboxes associated with every motor. Um, we learned very quickly that those type of complexities really don't earn their way onto an aircraft. And it was really difficult but necessary that we took a big step back from that program. We said, what didn't we like about the program? And those were some of the core elements. So we had a big paradigm shift in thinking. We said, thrust vectoring is not the right way to go forward, but dedicated propulsion is. So we created Aaliyah. And Aaliyah allows us to design motors and inverters and propellers that are optimized for their job. So in this case, we have four propellers and eight motors that are optimized for picking the aircraft up. Right. And one in the back that's optimized from an aerodynamic and electrical perspective that's optimized for long range. That net net is a better design than the, than the tilting rotor uh, thrust vectoring design. So we started flying that aircraft earlier this year and uh, and, and we've, been, uh, we've been improving on the, the basic thesis of simplicity every time we iterate on a new feature of the aircraft, a new function of the aircraft as we move from our initial manned flights to autonomous flights on the smaller aircraft. 
and to this one, which is a, uh, a cargo variant for Air Force Materiel Command and cargo carriers. There's two longitudinal booms that weigh about 120 pounds each, pretty lightweight. In the corner of each boom, there are these cartridges that house the axis of rotation for the lifting rotors. Um, those lifting rotors pick the aircraft up. And if you look at the thickness ratio of the middle of the wing, you'll see it's very thick relative to its length. And that's for the box beam torsional moment that happens when you yaw this airplane. So in the, in the vertical configuration, you're using the four rotors here and that box beam in the middle. You want to turn it to the right, well, you, you activate motors number one and three. You want to turn to the left, you go two and four. That counter torque turns the airplane around. Obviously, you want to lean it forward, the rear ones come up. You want to go backwards, the front ones come up. But, and, and the same thing for rolling the aircraft. The way that it flies is it picks itself up on the rotors, and immediately a pusher motor in the back turns on. You start accelerating forward. As you start to accelerate, for, accelerate forward, you reduce the torque on the four corner rotors because the wing starts to develop lift. And the, the sum of the lift generated by the top rotors and the wing always sums to the weight of the aircraft. So as you accelerate forward and the wing starts to develop dynamic pressure, you proportionally lower the torque on the four rotors to the point that the wing is carrying the entire load of the aircraft. At that point, these rotors are stowed so they're pointed directly into the wind. When they're pointed directly into the wind, it becomes very, very aerodynamic, very slippery, and you're using a rotor at the back that is optimized for cruise. Of course, when you come back into land, as you slow the airplane down, you never stall the wing, which is really interesting. You never stall the wing. All you do is you reduce speed, the dynamic pressure drops, the net lift of the wing drops, and you proportionally increase the lift as the wing drops, proportionally increase the lift on the four rotors, to the point that you come to a near stop and you stop the aircraft and you put it down. The aircraft isn't designed to hover around the way a helicopter is in a search and rescue or a, or a long lining application. It's designed to land on a pad. And therefore, it's a transient operation of bringing the lift rotors up. So it's really a very short takeoff and landing airplane um, because it spends 99% of its time flying on the wing. Very cool. Couple other neat design features. You probably notice the wing has a dihedral in the middle and an anhedral on the outside. That provides some very, very important stability um, uh, characteristics. And the that is the angle that we're talking about. Yeah, it's the angle from horizontal, exactly. Yeah. So the, the dihedral up here in the middle gives it some, some, um, some roll stability, some stability about the longitudinal axis. The same thing happens with that tail. That actually provides some, some spin recovery and, and resistance as well. You'll see that the, the vertical stabilizer is offset from these big long booms. And on top of these big long booms, you see rotors over there in the corner. Those rotors over there that sit on top, they disturb the air. But the cool thing is the rear rotor is in the wake of the front rotor, just like a bicyclist in a peloton. So the, the wake of this sucker punches the rear rotor and gives it very, very low drag. But we don't want low energy flow hitting the vertical stabilizer. So if you look straight down here, you'll see that that vertical stabilizer is offset from these two, so it gets clean air and you can make the vertical stabilizer smaller. So there's a lot of neat little aerodynamic tricks. These are also not straight. They're bent up and then down, and they're not vertical, the places where the, the vertical rotors attach. And that's to enhance controllability in the hover state.